Let us remember we are in the holy presence of God. Niccolò Machiavelli was born on this day in 1469 in Florence, Italy. He was an historian, diplomat, philosopher, humanist, and writer. By the time he was 30, Machiavelli was deeply involved in politics. As a diplomat, he met many important people of his day, including King Louis XII of France, Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I, Pope Julius II, and the infamous Cesare Borgia, about whom he wrote a book. That book, The Prince, describes Machiavelli's ideal ruler, a ruthless person unconcerned about morality, who believes that the end justifies the means. This ideal ruler is concerned not only with reputation, he said, but must also be positively willing to act immorally at the right time. Machiavelli's ideal ruler is not afraid to deceive others and to exercise brute force when necessary. In other words, in politics, anything goes. In our time, the adjective Machiavellian is used to describe any act that is taken for personal gain without any regard for the rights of others and for right and wrong in general. Today also happens to be the feast day of two of Jesus' disciples, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Philip. Both of these disciples were killed for their faithfulness to Christ and the gospel. We know next to nothing about James except his name, and of course the fact that Jesus chose him to be one of the twelve pillars of his new community. This James is not the James mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles. He is not the son of Cleopas, who is referred to as the brother of the Lord and who later became the Bishop of Jerusalem. James, son of Alphaeus, the James we celebrate today, is sometimes referred to as James the Lesser, to avoid confusing him with James the son of Zebedee and brother of John, also an apostle, and known as James the Greater. Wow, obviously the name James, Jacob in Aramaic, was a common name. Tradition has it that the James we honor today was teaching and preaching in Egypt when he was arrested and crucified. Today's second martyr, the Apostle Philip, came from Bethsaida, the same town as St. Peter and his brother St. Andrew. Jesus called Philip directly, and you may remember that Philip then went to his friend Nathaniel and announced that he had met the one about whom Moses wrote, he said. Like the other apostles, it took a long time for James and Philip to finally realize who Jesus really is. On one occasion mentioned in the Gospel of John, Jesus saw a great multitude following him and wanted to feed them. He turned to Philip and asked where they could buy enough bread for all those people to eat. Philip panicked and told Jesus, It would take 200 days wages to buy enough bread to feed this crowd. Of course, Jesus already knew that he was going to multiply the loaves and fishes to feed everyone. But he wanted to be sure that his disciples understand that apart from God's power, they were helpless. And he wanted them to see what could be accomplished with the help of God. Like James the Lesser, Philip was arrested and crucified around the year 80 AD at Hierapolis in modern-day Turkey. In 2011, some archaeologists announced that they believe they have discovered an ancient church and the tomb of St. Philip. What a contrast! On the one hand, we have the belief system of Niccolo Machiavelli's ideal ruler, his prince. Life is all about me and my power, about doing whatever it takes to enforce my will, to get what I want, to accomplish what I think must be done. This is my kingdom and my will must be done. And so don't worry about morality, only results matter. Be preemptive. Be sure to do one to others before they do one to you. On the other hand, we have the belief system of Christ and those who follow him, people like James and Philip. Life is all about recognizing and cooperating with God's power at work in the world. 
about discovering the will of God and doing that, even if it means laying down one's life. As we read in the first letter of John, this God is agape. This God is unconditional, self-giving love. So wherever and whenever anyone gives themselves to others, God is present, and God's will is being done. God is reigning. So our prayer is not, may my kingdom come, but may God's kingdom come. Not, may my will be done, but may God's will be done. No more, do one to others before they do one to you, nor do to others what they do to you. Instead, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, may the time come when everyone everywhere honors your name, when all do your will here on earth, when all practice the same self-giving love that is done eternally in heaven. Then finally your kingdom will be fully realized. Provide us food and shelter and whatever else we need to live in dignity. As you forgive us all our transgressions, so in turn we strive to forgive others that same way. Spare us from the greatest temptation of all, the temptation to lose hope, to abandon our faith and trust in you when we are tested by the experience of evil, especially the suffering of the innocent. We commit ourselves to you who are self-sacrificing love, knowing that when we give ourselves to others, you and your kingdom are present. Father, you alone are powerful, and in you alone do we glory, today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever.